this. Okay, good afternoon everyone. Uh, I would like to start with a simple introduction. So uh, these are my teammates in the back, Katarina and Marco. Uh, my name is Jovan. Uh, our team's name is uh, Masterclass and the name of our hack is uh, Survey Validator Pro. So I would like to explain a bit about the idea. So what we actually wanted to have is a platform which can be used as a service to distribute uh, different services or applications and collect data, process it in a way, uh, but at the same time uh, guarantee the validity of the data, uh, that the information is true, and uh, also the next step we wanted to achieve <coughs> was to make sure a person cannot actually uh, submit to different applications if they like change their email or something like that. So we, we wanted to make sure that one person can only have one submission. That was the, the main idea. Uh, so yeah, we use the data science API for uh, validation of the data. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's the research we used. And uh, also one more we used like a additional feature was to verify the age. So if we want a person, for example, to be over eight years old, uh, we also use that uh, API call. So without further ado, I would just like to uh, start the demonstration. Uh, yeah, so we have some uh, personal information of uh, a person who is signing the petition. And uh, let's, for the sake of this example, say this is a government issued petition. Uh, so it adds the significance and uh, we actually want the information to be true in this scenario. So we have some basic information and we deliberately uh, made a mistake for the last name and the address, for example. So uh, when we try this, it shouldn't be accepted, as you can see. And uh, we do not have that vote uh, recorded here. You can ignore the, the test one uh, for now. So that's the first use case if the data does not match the uh, telescience data. Uh, next example is actually the same person, same data, but uh, everything is correct now, so it should be a success. So we should, after this one, uh, have it stored. Let's just give it a second and check. <laughs> As all demos go, there was an error. So, uh, yeah, this uh, seems to be a minor issue, so we can skip it, but uh, it should have been uh, stored in the database uh, at this moment because the data was correct. I'm not going to try to debug it at the moment. And uh, <laughs> one more example that we have is the one I mentioned where we want to enable only uh, one submission per person. So what we have here, if you remember the test example here, so this is a person that already signed the petition and their email is test.test.com. Uh, if for some reason they want to uh, add another submission by using a different email and uh, in that way maybe trick the, the system, uh, it should fail because we do matching on all the parameters. So if the like if all the parameters match, but the email is different, it should be declined. Uh, uh, let's see. Hopefully it works. Yes. So the submission hasn't been accepted. And as you can see, we still have only one submission by that person. So yeah, that was the idea. Of course, uh, we don't have to require matching on all the parameters. Uh, we can decide which are more significant than others and uh, just use them for validation <coughs> and uh, basically this is what we have for the demonstration <coughs> uh, and this is just one way of uh, using this application we thought of some different ones as well uh, like uh, using a survey for I don't know like a research or market research whatever the, the person needs <coughs> and uh, yeah we can then like make sure we need, we are getting the results from certain countries or certain cities and if that's important for the results we want it to be true 
So that's also one way of using uh, the application, just an idea, of course. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. I hope I'm not over the time limit. So uh, thank you for the attention. And uh, are there any questions for me or the team? I have a few. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, of course. Oh, very, very interesting concept here. And like, uh, I like the idea. Uh, so, can I ask first, uh, what solutions did you use for the verification of the input parameters? So did you use contact or contact match or uh, which one? We wanted to use contact match okay. uh, initially, but uh, then we decided to just go with the contact okay. and uh, compare the parameters by ourselves. Okay. Because it was more convenient and it gives more freedom in like deciding which parameters are important. I mean, in okay. this case, they are all important, but it can be modified. So yeah, mm -hmm. we use contact. So when you were, what problems did you find with contact match? Well, no problems really, but... No, no, just tell me, what, what problems did you find with contact match? Uh, it was just like a better suit for us because uh, if we use contact match, we just get if it matches the parameter or not. Okay. And that's basically it, which is useful, but uh, this way we can just if we compare the parameters ourselves, we can decide which ones uh, are actually important. Uh, furthermore, we can like <clears throat> modify the way they are matched. I mean, street address, it can actually be pretty tricky to match because I guess some people enter it in a different format. So you could have the liberty of, you know, modifying it and uh, using that approach, maybe providing a better matching system and okay. Okay. so uh, and what system did you use to to to, to do matching did you, did you use some algorithm or just simple string comparison or how uh, you it? for the purpose of this demonstration we just used the simple string comparison okay uh, but uh, yeah definitely there is a point or a place where it can be improved like you said with different algorithms or you know just tailor it to to suit the needs we have mm -hmm. uh, just asking like uh, the, if you knew that contact match could have this algorithm already implemented, like uh, some sort of a string comparison, fuzzy logic, fuzzy logic, mm -hmm. would that be of interest? Would that change your decision? Well, uh, maybe not necessarily in this scenario, uh, but it would definitely affect uh, in the making of the decision. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, my uh, my personal approach is that if something is already implemented. Why bother implementing it yourself? Mm -hmm. uh, however, you know, you take some time to test it out and uh, see uh, if it actually it works the way you intend it to work. So, yeah, I'd say it would affect the decision, but not necessarily in, in our scenario for and, this. Okay. And, and you said you mentioned you also added the date of birth validation. Did you do that through contact or did you do it with this uh, uh, separate call? We use the age verified. Yeah, that was the call. Okay, that's it. Anyone else? So, in your third example, uh, you're trying to ensure uniqueness, right? Uh, for against the phone number, is that what you're using? Basically, as like a uh, primary key. <clears throat> well, the primary key is uh, email in our case. Oh, is it? Uh, yeah. So we yeah. don't want to. Like, we didn't want to store the the phone number in our mm -hmm. database. Okay. Uh, so. An email seemed like a next obvious choice, and uh, yeah, we, we want to make sure that if they change the email, then like try to prevent that. I mean, uh, it's not actually, one, you cannot say with 100% uh, certainty that if all the parameters are same, but the email address is not the same, that it's the same person, because it might not be, I mean, crazy coincidence, but who knows, but uh, it could be a step towards uh, discovering that kind of, you know, like, it is a bit suspicious. So, in this case, we acted like it means it is the same person, but in theory, it would have, like, more more improvements added to that. So, but if you're, if you're using email as a primary key and you're not storing the phone number, mm -hmm. um, then how would you ensure uniqueness if I come in, if I'm using my name and a completely different email address uh, and, and again my phone number, how would you <laughs> know that it's me or not me? Well, we uh, we matched all other parameters. So your name, your address, your uh, whatever we have uh, 
for the parameter city state uh if all of those match that is like i said it's not we cannot be certain that it's not uh, the same person but it is like something that raises suspicion sure at least to, just understand so uh, if you have a different email but all of the other parameters are the same then you would reject it that was the case uh, with yes that was the mm -hmm. case we showed okay. yeah that's right and one more why did you pick email uh instead of the phone number just curious see what, what uh, you just seemed like maybe we didn't want to store the phone number in a mm -hmm. database i mean uh email is like something that most people would agree with mm -hmm. uh it's pretty common but i don't know mobile number is maybe a little more sensitive information so in did that you, sense did you guys think about maybe doing like a, a one-way hash and then just comparing that ha that way you know it's not you don't know what the phone number is but you could then use yeah, it to compare yeah. again later that's true that's true i mean we haven't really uh worked on the idea itself we just <clears throat> decided to use the email okay for this case but it makes perfect sense yeah for the next for the next release <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rock on. <laughs>